Good afternoon and welcome to Revenue Marketing Television, the CMO Insights Series. I am your host, Jeff Pedowitz, President and CEO of the Pedowitz Group. Today, we have Jennifer Haney Crow, who is Vice President of Forecast 5 Analytics out of Naperville. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You bet. So tell us a little bit about Forecast 5. What do you guys do? Yeah, sure. So we are about a five-year-old company, so still growing, very young, with about 80-plus employees. Um, we market a data analytics and budgeting and forecasting software to the public sector. So we work with about 1,000-plus clients across primarily the K-12 through market, but also have a number of municipal-type clients, so cities or counties or township-type clients that we're supporting as well as some community college clients, and we're looking to be growing into those markets here in the next couple years. Um, we're owned by PMA Financial Network, which is our primary um, parent company, who basically had a product similar to our forecasting product, and it just kind of took off into what we offer today as software as a service, and we've introduced a number of other products in our lineup for our clients. So um, we're really helping to shape a lot of new um, insights and decisions and more strategic thinking within the public sector space. Very exciting. So I think you're, you're relatively new to the role, right? So how would you describe your three major challenges? What's, uh, what are you dealing with predominantly? Yeah. So I've been in my role for about 90 plus days now. So since the end of October of 2016, um, I was really the first marketing leader in the organization. They didn't really have a formal marketing team, so I've been able to really come in and the first challenge was really kind of shaping the team and creating an organizational um, structure with the existing team members that were here as well as thinking about any types of other team functions that needed to be moved in. So that was probably the first challenge, right, besides just learning the business and the product from a general standpoint of what am I going to be marketing. The second challenge was that I started the first day as a VP of sales um, as well. So a relatively new uh, function there as well. We had an SVP of sales who was overseeing a lot of different broad functions across the business from sales operations to our accounting to our client relationship managers. And they decided to hire um, my counterpart, my VP of sales, um, as a person to come in with me and kind of set now this new demand generation or revenue marketing and sales type of um, structure and organization and process and strategy. So that was another challenge, right, is new leadership on that part as well with sales. Um, he has started a relatively new young team in terms of an in what we call our inbound um, prospecting or hunter team. Um, that works with our outside team. So a lot of new faces, a lot of changes happening very rapidly and quickly over the last 90 days, a lot of new faces, just learning the product, learning the internal processes. So that was probably, you know, another challenge at the same time, right, is keeping the business going while still learning sure. and putting in new, new structures and processes and technologies. And then I think the third challenge in the last um, 90 days has been that um, this is all very relatively new in terms of implementing a revenue marketing and sales organization um, in terms of those six components of strategy and process and people and technology. Um, very, very new um, to this company as a whole, not really part of their culture. Um, a very, they were very much more a traditional um, conference and advertising type of culture. So to move to this um, different strategic approach of looking at content marketing and nurturing and engaging across the customer life cycle and using different technologies to do that, it was has been relatively new. Um, and so there's a lot of education um, that's had to be done across the business to help uh, folks understand the value and the potential impact that this could have to help us meet our demands. Uh, so it's uh, very exciting that do you find because you guys are all new and going through this together, is that easier to get alignment about some of the things that you're trying to do? Yeah, it's actually quite refreshing compared to my previous life um, where we were part of a much larger organization in that company um, that that had been around for very much longer, right? So they were their processes and understandings and things were much more institutionalized, if you will. So coming into this environment, um, it's been a lot. There's been a lot more um, of an embracement for innovation and change and flexibility, and um, having that autonomy as a marketing leader and a sales leader to come in and, and start doing these things because 
they understand that, that that's why they hired us. That's what they liked about our previous backgrounds in working in revenue marketing was being able to come in and, and bring that in. So that's just, it's been very refreshing to have that kind of flexibility and freedom to kind of do these things without too much um, resistance along the way. So um, given that you did come from a big enterprise before and now you're the small one, I'm just curious, your approaches to technology and the staff components you pick to scale. Are, are you finding you're making different choices based upon just your business, the size, the industry, and if so, so what are, what are they? I mean, and and yeah. how would you compare the difference, I guess, between the two? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's kind of and it's, that's a great question and a very interesting question. So, coming on board, um, there were some existing technologies or softwares that the company was using in terms of their customer relationship management software and um, their email marketing software. And very quickly, I was able to find that what they were using was not really um, robust enough or easy enough for the, the people that we have on staff or any future team members to come in and use. And so, obviously, I started to look at all the major players in the marketing automation world in terms of moving to that type of technology, as well as I was looking at different content management systems um, to move our website onto. We were working off of a, off of a um, you know, a free words uh, of. Joomla as, um, yeah. for our content management system, which was very um, not user friendly, very clunky, just very scary. I didn't even want to get in there compared to the content management system I was on before. So I came in and I actually um, have, am not using any of the existing technologies I was using in a previous life, but I'm using technologies that are really um, more fit for the size of business that we're in right now. Um, and actually have been very pleasantly surprised with, with the technologies that we're using in terms of their usefulness, um, the user friendliness for the newer people here in the organization that are very new to these types of technologies. Um, and so decisions have been made quite differently based on the types of people we currently have today and the size of the business in our model. So let's talk a little bit about um, results and outcomes. Obviously, it's still early, but what is your boss measuring you on and what are you measuring your team on? Yeah, so this is a really great question um, as well. So from my boss's perspective, you know, my counterparts in sales, they're really looking at the amount of activity coming into the pipeline and how many demonstrations of the product they're being able um, to secure in any given day. And so I'm tr closely trying to align the amount of activity in terms of what I'm doing and bringing in marketing qualified leads tied to how many webinars and demos and things that they're scheduling. Um, I'm very fortunate right now that I don't necessarily have any specific um, numbers that I'm being held to, um, but I'm kind of setting that standard for myself and bringing that, those kind of metrics, you know, building those KPIs and metrics in place for myself as well as the team so that within a year or two, we can be at that more of a um, specific performance or KPI type of level with, with what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I didn't have a lot of benchmarks to start from either, which would have been ideal. So a lot of it's kind of evolving and building in processes. We do different campaigns and things to kind of see where we need to, um, you know, gauge where we need to kind of start and how, how much we need to improve upon that, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely, it does. So you mentioned a couple different products that you were coming out with. So I'm curious as your approach to the customer lifecycle. So how much of your time is focused on top of the funnel and new demand uh, versus doing lifecycle marketing? So onboarding adoption, cross sell, upsell, and so on. Yeah, that's a great question. Right now, I would say it's being divvied out pretty equally amongst um, those different those different phases in the life cycle. Um, primarily over the last couple of months, we've been strictly focused on trying to bring our sales team into our marketing automation technology. So we're using the HubSpot platform. So a lot of what we've been doing from a process and procedure standpoint and building um, out the technology for its integration with and use with our sales team has been on prospecting, but now we are. Um, also, they are responsible for cross-selling the different other products we have in our lineup, so it ties very nicely into that part of the funnel. Um, and so we're also, so not only just starting prospect campaigns, we're also starting our cross-selling campaigns as well to our current customers who might not be using one of the other products. Um, even just this week, we're going to start to have conversations with our customer success team about how now we move them onto the platform as well and what are the types of activities we want to do out of the platform and the data that we'll need. So um, we have a lot of great ideas. There's never um, a loss for ideas around here with the different things we want to do when it comes to the full customer lifecycle. Um, but luckily, we do have the flexibility and the ability to also just move very quickly and do these things. So it's really very exciting. 
um, to start these programs, and, and everyone's really excited. People are asking, hey, can we be on those camp? Can we be copied on those campaigns and different things you're doing? Because they want to see all the great stuff that's coming out, and we've already had a lot of um, great feedback and already a lot of uh, marketing qualified leads come in as well from those campaigns. That's awesome. So in a, in a newer team like this, as you're scaling, what are some of the more important processes that you're putting in place? Yeah, so number one was our lead management process and, and how how that integration and process was going to work between our Dynamics, our Microsoft Dynamics CRM instance, yeah. and our HubSpot technology. That was really important for um, mar the marketing team, the sales team, as well as our operations team who administers our CRM to make sure that there was a defined process right in, in place that not only just looked at how a lead was moving across the funnel, um, and those stages and what they were being classified as in, in terms of criteria, um, but also looking at what types of automated other processes and other stages needed to be put in place um, dependent upon the business model we have. So lead management has been the number one process, um, type of process, I should say, that we've put in place. Um, I expect that to evolve, though, after time in terms of all the, the different parts of the business that that affects. But lead management has been by far the number one process that we put in place with our sales team um, for using it. And I expect that we'll also um, look at that as well as in terms of how it affects the client success team who are, are touching current clients for other products. Great. Um, another comparison question for you. So you know, your last company was pretty big, so there's more specialization in some of the people that you hired and work with. Um, yep. do, what are you finding you need with the smaller company, do you need more of a generalist or do you still try and hire the best of something? I, I was just curious as to how you're approaching it. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say right now um, we have a couple of specialists in, in and of their own um, function in terms of people supporting the overall all team, right? You know, your traditional graphic designer. We have a, now a video production specialist who's responsible just for our video content. Um, but right now, I think myself as well as the, the other marketing team member, we're kind of functioning more as generalists. Um, in the capacity of managing all of our digital operations and campaigns and everything from A to Z. And then we also have one function that's dedicated to events. Um, I do, I am constantly kind of um, evaluating that function though in terms of um, how much more expertise will I maybe eventually need on the team to support that. Um, because it, it definitely um, acquire, in, or it requires a person that not only has some experience um, and knowledge of best practices and strategic thinking ability, but also kind of that general business acumen to be able to think about the right questions to ask for things to do. And um, we have some very younger folks in our company right now, and so. Um, they're not they're not being taught these types of things right in their MBA classes or their their bachelor programs and so it's it's very much a learned skill set at the same time and um, so I'm kind of monitoring it if, if you will trying to have somewhat of a generalist experience but also monitoring it so that I um, as the business grows I can evaluate it and perhaps put in a little bit more um, expertise. So where do you want your team to be a year from now? Oh, that would be great. I would like to have a couple more team members to support the business. Um, I feel like the HubSpot experience um, and the embracement of it and just the excitement around it is really going to take off. Um, we're obviously building on our sales team, so we need to build out our kind of supporting teams as well. So I hope that we'll have some more marketing team members who, if not specialized within the area of marketing and, and, and trends in marketing with content marketing or revenue marketing, at least have people that can perhaps support the different uh, markets that we're going after, whether it's our municipal market or K-12 market, but some expertise in those areas to help kind of guide more of the content development and messaging. I think that's um, that's always an evolving challenge in an organization, right, is, is building enough content to support your programs, and, and that's also a big culture change within the organization in terms of the subject matter experts here. Some of them don't even know what a blog is, right? Um, so there's a lot of education still to be done there. So, you know, I hope that, you know, within a year or two, we're going to have some more experienced marketing folks on the team um, in some capacity or the other. Great stuff, Jennifer. Uh, we're out of time. Unfortunately, I could talk to you all day, but thank you so much for joining us on the show today, and we'll talk soon, okay? My pleasure. Thank you. You bet.